What we'll do now is we'll start working on the cheeks, nose and chin parts. Again, we're just working out from the mouth. And the first thing that we're going to do is this whole cheek area here. We see, of course, we've got that same deal that we saw with the, you know, simple rig where this cheek here isn't, you know, stretching and compressing to account for the mouth pull there. As I said, when we did the simple rig, you know, it was largely a fluke of the low res geometry that we were able to pull the mouth so far and it still looked okay. Clearly, now that we've got a higher density mesh, we see why that was indeed just a fluke and how it was specific to that sort of mesh density. So in this case, it's not just a nice added effect as it was back there here, it's really quite necessary. But rather than doing it with just a single old bone, we're going to add a little bit more control in it. So it's just a little bit more complex, not massively so. It's going to be quite, you know, straightforward in its own way. But let's just see it, shall we? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a null. I'll call this cheek base here. And I'm going to position this out to about the rough position well, not rough position, this will be an exact position, obviously, um, but where we're wanting that cheekbone to begin. I say cheekbone, let's not get confused because we've also got what would be the cheek bone of the character, you know, the actual skeletal part of the face that underlies the cheek in this area next to the nose. We will be dealing with that after, so please don't get too confused with my use of the word cheekbone that's going into this flat you know, floppy cheek area over here. To find exactly where I want to place this null, it's probably going to be easiest if I just take my mesh down to zero subdivision so I can see exactly where the lines of mesh are. Okay, and I think, yeah, okay, so let's say around here, let's put it right over that vertex, shall we? And let's just bring that out. Again, we're going to want it somewhere inside the mesh, just so it's got a a wee bit of depth in there, you know, we want bones somewhere deep-ish inside our mesh. We don't want them right on the surface. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's add another null. We'll call it cheek mid. Okay, and that's going to become a child of cheek base here. And then cheek base, we'll just rattle on up and make it a child of the face root there. Now we can probably just start compressing some of this stuff that we've been playing with before because we don't need to see it at the minute it just helps to simplify our scene editor down okay and cheek mid we are just going to reset value there and i'm also gonna do that thing where i scale this down because it's going to be a parent of an eventual controller so again i just want to get it scaled so i've got finer control over that eventual controller then we'll take the cheek mid and I'm just going to store the sign E and I'm going to get the NASLAB corner here, the one that, you know, the three, the one that's to the corner of the mouth. And I'll set that to be pos item, set world and 0.5, so 50%. I'm also going to take the cheek base here, store it as the assignee, get that mid NASLAB controller there and target that guy at it. All right, so we now see where our cheek mid is falling yep and its axis are lining up along the mesh there okay and i think that's pretty good but actually i am going to let it go a little farther along so let's try it at try 0.55 okay good yeah somewhere there i think you see i'm right in the middle of that cheek dip here now this is going to be an anchor point for a bone which i'm also going to want to be inside the mesh. So if I just come over to the main motion options and I'm just going to put a little plus on the X there. So as this guy winds up inside the mesh there like that, you see, it's just a little further along. So something like that. Now I'm actually going to rename that cheek mid. Let's call it cheek mid track, shall we? Because I'm going to want an actual controller, which I'll call cheek mid. Make that child of the cheek mid track. 
we set its position and its scale and also reset its rotation so it's aligned there and let's give it a wee item shape the x-ray i think a box perhaps use whatever a little color so now when the mouth is moving we have that in the middle and i've got this manipulable controller there now obviously we want exactly the same for the other side of the face so really this should all have been the left and then we just duplicate the whole setup here over for the right hand side and of course we change the targets and whatnot appropriately okay so there we have it and of course that little offset on x we change appropriately like that so there we go identical setup for the left and right now then we're going to want to put in the bones we want them under the main face root so that's out of bone we'll do the cheek one left give it a tip and we'll do as well a cheek two left with tip as well there okay so let's get our cheek one and we can just drag snap that here to that cheek base null now that null's not going to move so we don't need to bother constraining it we can just leave it sat there the cheek two bone we're going to get that store it as the assignee come out to our little controller there and pause item world it okay we'll select the cheek one l bone and the cheek two store those as our assignees then we'll select the mid null there and the naslab mid null set those as targets for each of those respectively and we'll get the tip and the other tip those are our assignees get the mid and the naslab mid set those to be the goals for those do our little ik on position keyframe them there set them back to keyframes we can then take the main two bones and rest length them get the rest lengths of the tips down make sure that they have no weight map zero percent or whatever weight map zero percent strength take the two actual main deforming bones there of course set their z scale to be ik and we can see that they should then be stretching along nicely like that so that whole system is working and then we can now create a map for the cheek area here a little weight map just to isolate all of that out okay a little bit of feathering of it off a little bit of softening and blending there let's just see how that works come in here get these two bones of course assign them the weight let's just grab that mid control we can see how that behaves it's a little imperfect at the minute it's maybe grabbing too much up here but we'll just see how it how it plays out certainly we're getting our compression there which is what we want once we've got the sub patch back on you know it is looking better that's for sure though it's still going up too much you know in this area but the main stretching through that main part of the face and of course down to the jaw line is pretty good see it can go quite extreme and it's holding up nicely down in this area it's just this bit around the cheekbone that's unpleasant nice simple answer to this is just to throw in another bone as we have here which is just the same thing it's just a stretch bone which is again reaching for this midpoint null and you can see that that's you know behaving much better see if we just sort of you know move the face here what we're getting out of that that's doing a lot more it's looking a lot nicer you can also notice one of the effects that we're getting from that you see this additional let me just um, do it in smooth yeah this additional fold that we've got here in this guy's cheek yeah he's obviously got his you know nasolabial fold here but he's also got this little run there this little extra ridge in the cheek giving it a bit of shape there you can see how that's creating this second line here under this setup yep this extra bit of compression there which is actually quite attractive and of course we can bulge his cheek by pulling this null out like that which is really rather nice if we want to we can always institute a fourth bone as well more or less from the same position but running down a different angle here we just turn up its strength and we see the 
sort of effect it has because it's doing that then it sort of softens off that edge there a little bit and see the slightly different effect that we get out of having that included you see it holds it in this area because it's reaching for the NASLAB mid there so we get this sort of secondary hold effect like that which works out quite nicely what else can we do with these guys well of course notice they're all at a hundred percent remember with those jaw bones how we dialed those down, down a little bit well we can do the same you know here we can have a little play with their with their strength you know see if they maybe don't just work out a little better when we reduce them obviously at zero they give that but yeah if we give them just a you know a partial weight I don't know say about 20 percent or something and we see that they still have a good effect but they're ever so slightly softened out more which is quite nice what I can also see is that I'm getting um, this effect going right up here into the cheek up there that's maybe a little bit high we can see where it's all weighted up there so maybe what I want to do is just either completely remove the weight map from there or just bring it down a lot let's maybe try it at 10 percent so it's very weak and there that's reduced it ever so slightly but you see that because of our positioning of the bone here the additional bones we've put in that they're stemming from sort of the cusp of where the actual you know cheek bone the the actual part of the skull under here is and of course where we've worked the weight map off there we are able to get a quite pleasing effect that really does bunch under that bit of skull and consequently our whole face there responds pretty well and in fact I think I am going to take those two vertices and just remove them from the weight map entirely yeah okay I'm happier I think with this effect now this of course also you know gives us another lesson in modeling and facial topology of course because you can see that you know whilst I've got these you know lovely edges that run down the cheek like this you know creating these polyflows going that way what this model doesn't have so well are polyflows coming you know across and around the undershape of the cheekbone here I mean they're cutting in in this you know spider web fashion as you like it this loop extending outwards from the mouth but of course where I've cut in these folds and wrinkles of course you get these little you know these little points these divots that are making life a little bit harder and where of course you've got these five point stars that come off places like this that's made deformation here a little bit harder and of course what would be this edge line coming there out of the side of the eye and across the cheek that's really not the best you know sort of poly distribution or edge distribution edge flow that I'm getting there again because of where I've cut these wrinkles in difficult to manage in certain ways a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain but as you can see we are able to deal with issues and areas like that and still get good performance and of course we should also check how this is going with our jaw and we see of course that that's still all playing nicely there so our actual jaw effect is still you know not hindered by the addition of these cheek bones that we've added in and that all plays nicely together so that's good we're happy with that and not only have we got you know the control of our cheek and the shaping of our cheek when we are you know doing all of this stuff here or manipulating the you know NAS lab having the cheek fall into it we've also of course got our cheek puff control or some part of it available to us from this null as well as of course the ability to just sort of you know wobble our cheeks about during speech or whatever other action um, especially if you've got a you know a flabbier looser skinned character then having this control that allows you to just sort of wobble the cheeks a little bit can add a ton of life to an animation so that's all good we're pretty happy with that